Paper 2, Question 3, Superstitions. So the purpose of this video is to practice finding language techniques, understand how to write a piece paragraph, and attempt an exam question. 25% of people believe in ghosts. Don't you think that's ridiculous? A belief in ghosts is stupid, ridiculous and childish. I once knew a man who was so scared of ghosts, he never left his bedroom as he was too afraid. So we're trying to find some techniques within this text. So if you want to pause it, you can have a look and see if you can find any techniques within it. But the answers you should have found were the statistics of the 25%. We have the rhetorical question, a group of three of stupid, ridiculous and childish, and this anecdote. Okay, so remember an anecdote being the story that proves your point. The next step would be to um, zoom in off the group of three or any technique that you think is, is suitable. So we have stupid, ridiculous and childish. Now they're all adjectives, but the first thing we want to do is name the word class of each word we look at. So stupid, it's an adjective, has connotations of a lack of intelligence. This word's been deliberately chosen for the, that connotation, the, the feeling of that word. It's almost insulting. Um, once again, we've got another adjective. This has got connotations of not being a reasonable belief, and we can mention the modern context of, of science and such things. Then we've got childish. It's an adjective. It suggests that no adult would hold this belief. So we've got those three adjectives, and our job really would be to explain the connotations of these words in relation to the exam question, which is how is the I use language to show his attitude towards those who believe in ghosts? <clears throat> so we would use a piece paragraph. For this, we have point, evidence, author's method, context, and effect. Now, a point is generally taken from the actual question itself. So it's pretty straightforward, and it, it should be the smallest part of your answer. Evidence is a quote. Now, for top marks, we have what they call a judicious choice of quotes. So that's when the text, the quote is very, very small and you've picked the perfect quote to suit that question. Author's method is then when we have a look in detail at the techniques the writers used, we might also zoom in on the words, talk about the word class and explain the overall effect of the word along with the technique. Then we have context. Context is a really, really important thing and this will differ between 19th century and a modern text. So you always need to make sure that you, you're aware of what context this was written in. Finally, we have effect, okay, the, the overall effect of the techniques and how this relates to the to the um, the question. So the writer has used a rule of three to show his attitude towards those who believe in ghosts. Stupid, ridiculous and childish. The three adjectives together create a negative tone showing that he is strongly against the idea of believing in ghosts. <clears throat> the adjective ridiculous suggests that the idea doesn't work in a modern context where science and our understanding of the world has grown. This is reinforced with the adjective stupid, suggesting that it is people with a lack of intelligence that would believe this, showing that the writer is almost angry to think people would hold these beliefs. Now, this might be a kind of um, a level four, maybe a, a bit above that, um, probably, probably a level five to be honest, but what we're trying to do is try and expand upon explaining the actual effect of the author's method. We've got one more word that I haven't zoomed in on, that's the word childish. Now childish can be a really insulting word, and the more detail we go into that, the higher our mark would be. But I'd really only ever write um, one piece paragraph for your answer like this. So it's time for you guys to have a go. I want you to download the worksheet, read and annotate the text, and write an answer in the form of a piece paragraph. I want you to email uh, email me your answer and I'll um, see if I can mark it. Okay, you should only spend about 12 to 15 minutes in the actual exam answering this question. But I understand that practicing it might take you a little bit longer, but try and experiment with the timings. So remember, try and use the actual piece paragraph structure and let me know how you go on. All right, thanks guys. Bye.